Imagine playing soccer without cleats. You would be slipping all over the place and you would suck. That's basically what it's like to use a dull woodworking tool. So one thing I do to help with that is I use an angle setting jig in conjunction with a honing guide that sets a blade at a certain angle based off of these little kind of protrusion stop blocks. So this is what we're gonna be building in today's video to help you get better sharpening results. This was the first angle setting jig I made for myself. Lee Nielsen provides plans on their website. Um, I followed them pretty much to a T. I made these a little bit thicker just so they were easier to work with and also changed the distance between these to fit them to my uh, diamond plates. Um, one thing we're gonna change in today's build is they have seven stops um, in their plans. And I do not ever foresee myself using these uh, most extreme two, which are 20 degrees and 50 degrees. So I'm gonna knock these two off and we're gonna make these pieces a little bit bigger, uh, which will be easier to work with and will make sure that the stops you have on your angle setting jig, uh, you're more likely to use. Make sure you watch all the way until the end. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway where one lucky viewer uh, gets the angle setting jig that we make in today's video. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is gather your materials. I encourage you to uh, use scrap materials whenever possible, but especially when you're building a shop jig like this that's very functional. So for this base, I would encourage you to use plywood that's anywhere between a half inch to three quarter inches thick. Um, I think this one is uh, almost three quarters. I have a, a little bit of that left over from my last time I, I made this, so I'm gonna use the same one, as long as you can get 11 inches by 12 inches out of it. For these pieces here and these as well, uh, I would use a hard wood like ash or oak or maple. Um, you're gonna be butting a blade up against this repeatedly, so it's nice if it's a hard wood. Uh, these pieces are three quarter inches wide by uh, three eighths of an inch th uh, thick. We'll go over the, the widths later since we're gonna make uh, five stops instead of seven. Uh, this, these are a half inch thick by eight inches long and they're also three eighths of an inch thick. I found two pieces of oak uh, that have been laying around the shop for a while. I'm gonna use that for the stops. Uh, for the bottom piece here that allows you to kind of butt it up against your bench top, uh, I found this old piece of barn wood um, from the aprons on my dining table that I made. I thought that would be kind of fun to use. And then uh, there's one more piece, this little, little tiny stopper here um, that allows you to kind of put it up uh, against these little protrusion guides and that will add about two degrees um, to your blade when you're sharpening and you just wanna add a micro bevel. So that's, that's what this is for. Dimensions don't matter that much except for the thickness. This is um, pretty precisely one eighth of an inch thick, uh, which is an important one to get right because that will add you know, a certain amount uh, to your angle when you're sharpening. And I have a nice piece of sapili from my shoe rack project that I'm gonna use for that. So should be a fun mix of woods. Start by making sure you do have a square corner on your piece. If you don't, make sure you square it up. Uh, once you have that, go ahead and mark an 11 by 12 inch rectangle. The first cut I'm gonna make is gonna be the 11 inch cut and then we'll cut the 12 inch cut. I'm gonna clean up these edges real quick uh, so they're nice and smooth uh, coming off of the table saw. All right, your first piece is done. Now that I've got the base uh, roughed out, I'm gonna move on to uh, getting all my stop blocks cut to the right thickness. So I have two pieces of oak here that I'm gonna be using for the stop blocks. And so I'm gonna run them through, uh, through my planer and get them down to 3 eighths of an inch thick. Lastly, I'm gonna use this little piece of sapili um, and get it down to about one eighth of an inch, uh, pretty precisely one eighth of an inch, which is gonna be the little stop block uh, that allows me to get a micro bevel as I'm sharpening. In case you don't have a planer, I wanna show you how quick it can be to bring a piece of wood down to thickness, even with a hand plane. So this piece of wood here is one inch thick and I want it to be about three quarter inches um, thick. So a quarter inch is kind of a lot. I'm going to swap out my blade with a scrub plane blade. So this is a scrub plane bl blade. Uh, it's a little curved and uh, it allows you to take off wood super quickly. In real time, that was probably two minutes. Um, and so you can see that is down to three quarters of an inch uh, in not too much time. 
For this piece that's going to be used for the little angled stop locks, I'm going to strike a line at three quarters of an inch. And for the strip that's going to be um, used to hold the sharpening stones in place, I'm going to strike the line um, at half an inch. When pieces get small like this, I do prefer to use the bandsaw. Last piece I need to cut to size is the piece of wood that's going to go underneath the angle setting jig that I can kind of push against the table. You know, I'm just going to guesstimate here around um, half of an inch. All of the edges coming off of the bandsaw are going to be a little rough, so I'm going to smooth these up uh, with my just a few passes of my hand plane here. Now is also a good time to show you one of my favorite uses for a hand plane, which is sneaking up on a measurement. You can see here it's just a, a hair over a half an inch, and uh, with just a few strokes with your hand plane, um, you can really dial that in. So you can see now that is perfectly half an inch. Now it's time to get this piece of wood, which is going to be used for that little uh, kind of stop block, down to one eighth inch thickness. It's time to cut the little uh, stop blocks that will allow you to get different angles on the angle setting jig and each one is going to be two and one eighths of an inch long. And so uh, we need five of them. So to get five that are exactly the same size, I have it marked right there. I'm going to um, put that right up against uh, my table saw blade, get it set. I'll slide it back and I have this little magnet thing where I can place that uh, right against my work piece, hold it down turn this little thing and now it's kind of stuck to the table saw. I put uh, my table saw fence against it just to ensure it definitely doesn't move. And now I can get extremely repeatable cuts. Just to make it the same size as the stop blocks, I'm gonna cut um, a two and one eighth piece um, from this piece of wood that's gonna be used for creating the micro bevel. Last, I have these two strips that I'm gonna cut down to eight inches. I like to use a small plane, just like uh, a block plane and I just run Run the piece over the plane to chamfer the edges. Now it's time to cut the corners off of the little shim. In the Lee Nielsen plans, uh, they have a hole and it's sort of, uh, it's sort of like tied to a string on this so you don't lose it, but uh, I never got around to doing that and something tells me you won't either. So I can just kind of quickly clean that up uh, with my block plane. For this bottom piece that acts as a stopper uh, against your bench top, I am just going to use a draw knife and just kind of quickly bevel it. You can see it's starting to look like our angle setting jig. You know, I'm a little fancy, so I like to paint the uh, base of my angle setting jig. This also protects it from slurry, which is a mixture of steel and water that's going to come in contact with your angle setting jig. Um, so I think it preserves life and it looks really nice. Um, so before we do that, I am going to chamfer a few of these edges um, just to kind of soften it up. It's important not to chamfer the edge uh, that's right by the stop box here. The, the honing guide has to butt kind of right up against that edge and you really want this one edge to be pretty crisp, but you can chamfer every other edge on the bottom. So I love me some milk paint, so I'm going to use Blue Spruce Green from the Real Make pa Milk Paint Company and a chip brush that I also got from them. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to mix a little bit. I don't need that much. This is a, a one to one ratio. So I'm going to go and fill up a little bit of water uh, about the same amount here. And I'm also going to put uh, some of this anti-foaming agent in. I just find it, uh, you get less bubbles when you're mixing it up. So I'm going to go put the water in here, mix it up, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then we'll be back. So I like milk paint. It's easy to apply. I really like it because it's non-toxic um, and it just looks really beautiful. Your first coat should be dry at about one hour or so. And after the first coat, it's gonna feel pretty chalky and kind of rough. I like to use a Scotch-Brite pad. This is specifically the Scotch-Brite 7447. I like to use the pad to um, just kind of like lightly smooth out the surface. Um, and it'll make the uh, second coat feel a little bit better when you lay it on. Before you put your second coat on, just make sure you really get kind of all the, all the dust off after um, kind of like lightly sanding it. Also, if you don't have one of those pads, you can just use some 220 grit sandpaper. 
Now that the second coat is dry and I let this dry overnight, I'm going to kind of burnish it uh, using another Scotch-Brite pad, but this is uh, 7445. It's not very abrasive. Um, and it just kind of, again, knocks down any fibers that came up when you uh, put the paint on. And it just kind of gives it a nice sheen before you put oil on it. Before you oil it, just give it a nice quick rub down with a paper towel, just to make sure uh, there's no kind of dust left. Now this is absolutely one of my favorite steps. I use Osmo's uh, wood wax finish specifically the 1101 clear. It's nice and thin. This is gonna soak into the wood and super duper protect it. I'm gonna put this on actually all of the pieces now. So you can see here I'm applying this oil uh, with a Scotch-Brite pad as well. Um, that's just my favorite way to use this Osmo. It just distributes it really nicely. It kind of continues to burnish the piece uh, while you are finishing it. Let that oil dry for about 30 minutes and then come back with just kind of a nice thick shop cloth and just rub off any excess. For the last coat of finish on everything, I'm gonna use another product from Osmo. It's their 3043. Uh, it's a hard wax oil and it gives kind of a satin finish, which is really nice. Um, it looks good and it's very protective. So one note on safety, uh, you're gonna end up with a lot of rags that sort of are just soaked in the finish. Um, make sure you lay these out flat when you are done. They can combust if they are kind of crumpled up like this, uh, especially if they're in a waste bin with a bunch of others. Um, that's a common thing with finishes. So anytime you're using a finish, just make sure you lay whatever rag you're using out nice and flat so it can dry for about 24 hours. We are so close to being done. We have all of our parts um, cut out. Everything has been prepped and finished. And so the last step is to attach everything to the base. A couple quick notes on uh, some of the tools and hardware I'll be using to uh, attach some of these pieces here. I have two drills here. Um, I have one with a countersink bit on it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna drill the holes in each stop with. This is just another one to drive the screws. I typically do finish, finish off the screws by hand just so that I don't strip them. The hardware I'll be using, um, I've got a bunch of these brass screws. Um, so these are number eights. Um, they're slotted brass screws. They're three quarter inches long. And I got them from a company called Fastenier. Okay, so let's get going here. So this first one is set to, this is the 25 degree stop block, um, is set to um, an inch and a half. So I have my um, square set to an inch and a half. Carefully place a clamp over it. One quick note, if you finish this process and you're like, oh, this looks like garbage because everything's all wee wah it's honestly okay. It's a little hard to keep these things perfectly square when you're screwing them in, but the thing that matters more than exact distance, distances here and exact angles that you're sharpening to is actually consistency. So it doesn't really matter that much if these are not at the perfect distances or they're not perfectly square. As long as whatever you're using uh, on each stop block is consistent, uh, that's the most important thing. The next two pieces that we need to add are these two little cleats. This top one is gonna be three eighths of an inch away from this side and two and a half inches away from this side. And then um, between them, you are gonna have uh, eight inches and an eighth in between these two pieces. If you have your stones with you, what I would do is just put the stone there and give it about uh, one sixteenth of an inch kind of wiggle room so it's not like a tight fit. So now I can butt that up against there. Got my little piece I can kind of keep there. It will hold my stones. Uh, it'll hold my coarse stone and my extra, extra fine. And we can get sharpening. One thing I'll show you is that, you know, on the bottom of these, there's these little grippy feet, which is nice because they don't move around. But if you're using uh, water stones, Lee Nielsen uh, recommends just kind of cutting some of this shelf liner so that your stone can kind of fit between the cleats and it doesn't move around at all. 
if you want a little extra credit on this project, um, I like to kind of stamp the numbers in uh, on each one just so I can remember it later. If you don't have that, you can of course just draw it in with a pencil or a pen. We are done with our project. Congrats if you uh, completed this or if you're working on it. I hope this helps you get better, uh, more repeatable sharpening results. Uh, so now for the giveaway, uh, one lucky viewer will get this for free. Uh, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and tag a friend in the comments down below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.